Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, soccer fans of all ages, this is Armin Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium, home of your Brockton Boxers. And today, it's the home opener for the Brockton High School boys soccer team as the rivals from the south, the Bridgewater Random Trojans, come to town to face your Boxers. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. You bring you that. Let me start that over, folks. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high atop Colombo Field here at Marciano Stadium. In what could very well be a rain-shortened game, today's weather all sorts of funky. Thundering and lightning earlier. We've got a little gap in the action now. And it's supposed to start up again right as we kicked off. The Bridgewater Random Trojans visiting again from the town to the south of Brockton. Wearing their away red jerseys, blue shorts, red socks. The Boxers, on the other hand, coming off a strong playoff performance in last season's MIAA South Sectional. Wearing their home whites with red and black trim. A very, very warm, or should I say humid, game here at Marciano Stadium today as the first touch of the game from senior goalkeeper Fabio Andrade, one of three senior goalkeepers listed on the Brockton roster. Now Brockton with an opportunity broken up at least initially and Bridgewater Random's goaltender able to charge out of his net and clear it back towards midfield. Brockton with another shot. This one punched out by the BR goaltender and Brockton Applying some sustained pressure early. Here's an opportunity and a shot that's going to trickle just wide. Jack Gavin, the junior goalkeeper for the Trojans, tending the net tonight. With a couple of nice saves early in this first half. Only about two and a half minutes into the first half. Brockton's head coach, Herminio Furtado, in his second year. Having a lot of fun getting involved in the aspects of the game in the community of Brockton. A few weeks ago, of course, we had a amateur soccer tournament here at Marciano Stadium. And head coach Furtado was the coach of eventual champion Santiago, each team in that tournament named after one of the Cape Verdean Islands. And Coach Furtado has this one sent all the way up. And it's going to be shielded, but Jack Gavin waiting just a little bit too long for comfort for the Bridgewater Raynham fans. But head coach Furtado said he would love to replicate the atmosphere that we saw here at Marciano in that championship game just a few weeks ago. Thirty-six twenty-four left. Brockton with sustained pressure early in this one. <laughs> Brockton with a Fairly new team, graduating a lot of seniors last year. This team headlined by senior captain Junior Gomes at midfield. Now Brockton with an opportunity and some space. This is number 24 working in the corner. That is Mo Moacir Ramos. And he gets it over to number three, Claudio Mascarenhas. 
Told you, there's some killer names on this roster, folks. Now a shot, and this one is going to be deflected just wide. And it will be a, I believe, a corner kick for the Brockton Boxers, meaning it went out of bounds off of Bridgewater Raynham. Captain Junior Gomes taking this kick, sending it across the box to an open boxer on the other side. He pops it up into the box, punched by the goalkeeper Gavin, and popped up high and wide to the right by Gomes. Absolutely no wind here at Marciano for the start of this game. Both well, a good thing and a bad thing. He just very evenly matched, but the heat is a little bit unforgiving tonight. Throwing for the boxers from about the 10 yard line of the football markings. This one sent deep into the box. Brockton with an opportunity, headed and sent wide. That was number two. Leandro Barros, the junior midfielder, getting his head on that opportunity for the boxers. Free kick for Brockton. Very good position, 25 yard line. It's about 30 yards out from the Bridgewater Random net. Go one of two ways here. Put it directly on net and test junior goalkeeper Jack Gavin, which is what looks like it's gonna happen. Headed in and still loose and popped up. Still loose. And Gavin with sticking his right leg up and able to deflect that one out. We might have to get the FIFA goal line technology on that one. It looked like it might have crossed the line. Brockton's best opportunity of the night negated by the right leg of Jack Gavin, junior goalkeeper. Bridgewater Random with no offensive opportunities, no shots thus far in this game. Is Gomes slipping a little bit on the wet turf? Now Bridgewater Random with a little bit of an opportunity. Number 15 putting a shot that is deflected off of one of the boxers. That is Ryan Hess for the Chargers. Now Gomes sending it back towards midfield for Brockton. Brockton a very fast team. A lot of tall players in the midfield. Now Gomes sending this one out of bounds off of Bridgewater Random. Excellent play there by Junior Gomes. At the boxer's possession, at least initially, sent out of bounds off of the knee of number two for Brockton. That is Leandro Barros, the junior midfielder. Bridgewater random substitution is number 29, Ryan Demerol, and number 20, Tyler. This one sent high, deep into Trojan territory. Out of bounds off of Brockton. Wait, where's the paper? 
Brockton with relentless midfield pressure. This one on sides and a breakaway for the boxers. A shot is going to go just wide by about a foot. They are escaping there. Excellent work by the boxers to stay on sides. I believe Jonathan Rodriguez, senior forward, with that opportunity for the boxers. Now it's Rodriguez again trying to create some space in the middle. He has it broken up by number 49 of the Trojans who has committed a penalty. That is Anthony Brazau. Brockton trying to reset up the quick attack. Gomes to number 13. That is Jalen DeRosa. Now be on a foot race. It could be a three on two up turf for the Trojans, number 26. And alone, his shot is going to be saved very nicely by Fabio Andrade. Number 26 on that opportunity for the Trojans, Jeff Bodendorf. And a penalty committed by the Boxers. Free kick from just inside of their own midfield for the Trojans, sending it all the way up for Bodendorf. Gomes coming into the game for the boxers. He replaces Leandro Barros. This one shielded out of bounds by the Trojans. They will have a throw in front of their own bench. 27-20 left to go. Still scoreless here between the Bridgewater Random Trojans and your Brockton boxers. And I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson here bringing you all the action from the Peter Farley press box here at Marciano Stadium. And trying to filter it through unsuccessfully was number 13, Jalen DeRosa. Back and forth for Bridgewater across midfield. Now sent up for Rodriguez, just a little bit too far, and it's picked up by Jack Gavin. More substitutions getting ready to come into the game for the boxers. Keegan O'Connor into the game for the Trojans. 
Zach Davis. Zach Davis joining O'Connor on the field. As well as number 10, Joe Risco. Now with some space in the middle, a shot is going to be saved by Gavin. Just under 25 minutes to go, 24.05 left in the first half. Still scoreless, Brockton with the majority of the opportunities. The field definitely seems tilted in the direction of the 26 foot Rocky Marciano statue. Opportunity for the boxers. Rodriguez in the corner, getting possession back, sending it to number 24. Broken up by the defense of the Trojans. And we have a boxer down just inside midfield, a pretty big collision. Clock stops with 23 minutes even in unofficial time. Free kick for the boxers just inside midfield. Trying to convert one of their so far many opportunities. A very good ball deep into Trojan territory. Deeper than any of the other boxers thought that would go. But an excellent turnaround move by number 10 of the boxers, Junior Gomes. And Brockton threatening once again. And now Jonathan Rodriguez is tripped up. And we're going to have no call. The official immediately signaling that that was a clean play for the Trojans. <laughs> and this is going to be offsides against the Boxers. Brockton in offensive heavy attack, only playing with two defenders back at the 50 yard line. Now Rodriguez in yet again, and he's tripped up, and this is going to be a penalty kick for Jonathan Rodriguez and the Brockton Boxers as that penalty occurring inside the goalie's box. So Brockton looking to put home their first one of the night. This is going to be taken by number 10, senior captain, Junior Gomes. Twenty-one minutes left in the first half. Brockton looking to convert on a PK here early. As Jonathan Rodriguez was tripped up inside the goalie's box. Jack Gavin getting ready to try and defend this one. Gomes shoots right corner and it's a goal for the Brockton Boxers. Junior Gomes putting it top right corner. And the Boxers have a one to nothing lead about halfway through the first half. 
So BR with possession off the restart. Lone goal this half coming from the right leg of Junior Gomes and on a penalty kick. That the opportunity that created the penalty kick for Brockton really a testament to the pressure that Brockton has created thus far in the first half. <laughs> One to nothing, boxers. Halfway through the first half and pressuring yet again. A little bit of a communication issue for the Trojans. This one's shielded out of bounds. Brockton retaining possession. Now popped up looking for number three, Claudio Mascarenas. This is going to be a corner kick for the Boxers. Second corner of the game for Brockton. This one sent low into the box, deflected and hitting a Trojan defender out in front. And BR escaping at least for the moment. Brockton sending it right back in. Now a foot race to the corner. Brockton winning that foot race and tripped up out in front and picked up by Jack Gavin. And Bridgewater again the word of the half for the Trojans is escape. And number 24 for the Trojans racing into Brockton territory. Number 24, Chris Daly, unable to create some sustained pressure for the Trojans. Brockton again sending the ball long into the Trojans side of the field. Gavin this time charging out of his net to defend. 16 minutes left in the first half. One to nothing boxers. Again the goal coming off a penalty kick from Junior Gomes. And we're going to have offsides against the boxers. I'm 
Gonna have a substitution as number 10 of the boxers. Junior Gomes, the goal scorer. Has some blood on his jersey, so he's gonna have to change. Looks like Gomes's undershirt had some blood on it. So Gomes getting ready to come right back into the game. Along with Jonathan Rodriguez. Now Gomes is now wearing number 18. It is the jersey of Leonardo Texera. Bridgewater Random has changed out goaltenders. Pray for me on this one, folks. The new goaltender of the Trojans is Scott Papasodoro. And he's going to be immediately te tested and making a save. Now cleared back towards midfield by the Trojans. And now a foot race is going to be won by the boxers and sent back towards midfield. This one sent back in for number 18, who I believe is Junior Gomes, but it could be Le Leonardo Texera. 12-14 left in the first half. Number 27, sophomore defender Ronilson Mendez getting ready to come into the game for Brockton. Yeah, Brockton getting a little bit sloppy on defense, committing a penalty against number 24, Chris Daly. Free kick from the 20 yard line in front of the boxers bench. About 10.45 to go in the first half. Daly gonna take the kick for the Trojans, sending it low, I believe off the arm but nobody there for the Trojans and cleared back across midfield for Brockton. And now we will see 
Renoson Mendez for the boxers. Bodendorf back into the game for the Trojans. Back and forth action again. The lone goal of the first half coming from a penalty kick from senior captain Junior Gomes. Opportunity created on that play by Jonathan Rodriguez, the senior forward. Brockton, a senior heavy team, including all three goalkeepers listed on their roster. Fifteen seniors listed on this team. No freshmen. Only a handful of juniors. Eight juniors and three sophomores rounding out the boxers roster. And sophomore head coach, Herminio Furtado. Eight forty-five to go in the first half. And one nothing Brockton. On top of their border rivals, the Bridgewater Random Trojans. The first edition this year of the Cape Cod Bowl matchup. Of course, these two teams play on Thanksgiving Day and football. This year will be at Bridgewater Random. Bridgewater Random throwing deep in boxer territory. Weather so far is held up. Still only misting at this point. Supposed to pick up thunder and lightning. But we here at Brockton Community Access Sports, where due dil diligence, and if it's thunder and lightning and they're still playing, then we're still recording. Anything for the loyal viewers of Brockton. Hopefully we won't get to that point. Seven minutes left in the first half. Fabio Andra looking strong in net on the few opportunities he's been tested thus far. I believe we're going to have some substitutions. Brockton getting ready for another couple of substitutions. Junior Gomes 
back in the game. Now sent up and Gomes can't catch up to it. Goal kick for the Trojans. Five minutes to go. We remind you, two 40-minute halves. The scoreboard clock stops with two minutes as the official time is kept on the field by the referees. We here on the Mad Dog Research Team keep a stopwatch going that starts at two minutes and we try to gauge as best we can. Last night, we were within 11 seconds in both halves of the referees. So we'll set the over-under of correctness at 10 seconds, at 10 and a half seconds. To gauge and brought in another opportunity, loose. And the goaltender, Papa Sodoro, was down and it's going to be in offsides against Brockton. Bridgewater Rainer able to get it back to midfield, but Brockton taking possession and charging ahead is number three, Claudio Mascarenas. Now a shot, and it's gonna go wide just to the right of Papa Sodoro. Brockton with yet another opportunity. Gomes out in front trying to find the ball. Now a cross broken up by the BR defense. And this one sent over the end line. It'll be a corner kick. Their fourth of the game for the Brockton Boxers. Two and a half minutes to go. Mascarenas going to take it for the Boxers. Long over the top, taken by Gomes off the head, and this one deflected towards net. Mascarena sending it off the bottom of his cleat and wide of the net. Goal kick for the Trojans. Clock hits two minutes, the scoreboard stops. The stopwatch starting. Official time kept on the field by the referees. Now this one sent in and a goal, an absolute snipe from 20 yards out by Junior Gomes, his second goal of the game. Out of nowhere, Junior Gomes has his second tally of the first half. A phenomenal shot by Junior Gomes from the far hash mark. 25 yards out from the Bridgewater Random net, and Papa Sodoro couldn't do anything about it. And Brockton right back into the end of attack. Approximately one minute left in the first half. Two to nothing, Boxers, Junior Gomes, both of the markers. Just 
This one sent ahead in another foot race won by the Brockton Boxers. And an opportunity from 10 yards out blocked away by the Bridgewater Random defense. Brockton relentless in the offensive half of the field thus far in this game. We are two minutes into the final two minutes. And Papa Sodoro diving on top of the latest boxer opportunity from Leonardo Texera. Now two and a half minutes into the final two minutes. The whistles blow. And the first half has come to an end. The score two to nothing. The Brockton Boxers leading the Bridgewater Random Trojans. Junior Gomes with both of the tallies for the Boxers. One on a penalty kick and one from a snipe about 25 yards out from the net. That's where we stand at the end of the first half. Brockton two, Bridgewater Random nothing. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. More will talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, soccer fans of all ages, welcome back into Marciano Stadium for second half action between the Bridgewater Random Trojans and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high atop Armand Colombo Field here on the campus of Brockton High School. The score is Brockton 2, Bridgewater Random nothing, and the rain has started to pick up just a little bit, misting a little bit heavier here as the... Southeastern Massachusetts area tries to contend with the after effects of Hurricane Harvey. As we prepare for Hurricane Irma and close on its heels, Hurricane Jose. It's going to be a wet few weeks here at Marciano Stadium. Not for us, we're in a nice dry press box for any of the fans that might be here. Both of the boxer goals coming from the right leg of Junior Gomes, one on a penalty kick and one an absolute snipe from about 25 yards out. And the senior captain for the boxers showing why he wears the captain's C. Brockton charging ahead. It's their goaltender, Fabio Andrade, has not been tested much this game. I'm going to get this. The duo of goaltenders for the Bridgewater Ram Trojans, on the other hand, Jack Gavin, who started this game, and now Scott Papasodoro, have been tested early and often. One goal against each of them. 
Trojan throwing deep in boxer territory. The field starting to get a little bit slippery here at Marciano Stadium. This one sent all the way up and out of bounds by Brockton's back midfielder. Leandro takes, uh, Leonardo rather, takes error, could not keep it in bounds, sending it out off of one of the Trojans. Now an opportunity for Junior Gomes. His shot picked up by Papa Sodoro. Four minutes into the first half, Brockton already starting to pressure. It's number 22 of the boxers, Derek DePina, senior defender, using Substitutions, Penny is this one. He's gonna find the back of the net and Brockton scores again. DePina sending it in. I believe it hit Leonardo Texera out in front. Leonardo Texera will be credited with this goal. Number seven. Number seven scored the goal. That is Brian Deleuze, assisted by Leonardo Texera. So Derek Deleuze, or Brian Deleuze rather, scoring the goal, senior midfielder, again assisted by Leonardo Texer, Brockton with a three to nothing lead, 35 minutes left in the second half. <laughs> Papa Sodoro shielding this one out of bounds. Goal kick for the Trojans as the weather starting to pick up even a little more. Excellent defensive play by number 15 of the boxers.
This one's sent in. We're going to have a whistle and an offsides against the Trojans as they've started to pick up the offensive pressure just a little bit. Brockton with some room to run yet again. This is Junior Gomes. Well, that was Jonathan Rodriguez on the far side who was tripped up. Free kick for the boxers. Just outside of the goalie's box, it's going to be Junior Gomes taking the free kick. And why not? He's already got two goals, and this one goes just wide. It's going to be a corner kick for the boxers. Gomes to take this one. This one loose out in front, and Brockton unable to get a clean shot off, but still with possession down low are the boxers. 31 and a half minutes to go. And yeah, Bridgewater Rhythm escaping once again. Bridgewater Rhythm is going to swap out their goaltenders yet again. Derek McCartney is going to take over for Papa Sodoro. Now Gomes going for a run. He gets it past McCartney. He's in alone. And Junior Gomes for the hat trick. Thirty minutes even left in the second half, and Brockton with a four to nothing lead, and Junior Gomes with the good old fashioned hat trick here at Marciano Stadium in the home opener for the Brockton boys soccer team. And Bridgewater Arena is going to take a timeout. As the Brockton bench celebrates their captain netting a hat trick. And we're going to step aside, take a quick 30 second timeout and bring you the rest of the second half right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. More will talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Welcome back into Marciano Stadium for 
the remainder of second half action. If you're just joining us, the score is four to nothing. The Brockton Boxers leading the Bridgewater Random Trojans. Three of the goals. A hat trick for Junior Golems, the senior captain midfielder of the Boxers. And the boxers threatening yet again. This is the first game of the regular season for the boxers and quite the effort put forth by the boxers here in the opener. Big week for Boxer Athletics, of course, last night right here at Marciano Stadium. The Brockton Lady Boxer soccer team fell to their border rivals from Easton, the Olive Rams Tigers, by a score of four to nothing. Of course, Saturday afternoon, BCA Sports travels with the Boxers football team up to Lexington to bring you that game. Of course, the game everyone's talking about this week, the Kansas City Chiefs come to town to face the New England Patriots in the first game of the NFL season. Very excited for that game, very excited. Of course, the championship Super Bowl banner raising. Junior Gomes sending this one forward, broken up, getting it back. <laughs> and it's going to be an offsides against the Boxers. The next four matchups for this boys soccer team are away. They face in order Mansfield, Dartmouth, Rockland, and New Bedford before returning back here to Marciano on September 21st against Everett. The girls, on the other hand, is Brockton with another opportunity to show it on another goal. I believe this is Leonardo Texera for the boxers. <laughs> So Leonardo Texera credited with this goal. He now has a goal and an assist on the night. And the scoring touch continues for the Brockton Boxers. Brockton goal scored in the 26th minute of the second half by number 18, Leonardo Texera. Leonardo Twenty five minutes left in the second half, a five nothing lead for the boxers. Looking to add to it now and loose out in front. Gomes shanking this one. Still in play and still with an opportunity. 
are the boxers. Five nothing boxers on top in quite the convincing opening game to the twenty seventeen season. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, soccer fans of all ages, we are now joined by not so newly named athletic director. That's an official title. Get it on the business card. It is. Kevin Cairo. Mr. Cairo, living by your own rules, wearing white after Labor Day. Love it. No, I wait until at least Columbus Day. At least before, Columbus before Day. These, before these get packed away. <laughs> so you were over at the gym for yeah, the, girls, uh, the opener for volleyball. Girls volleyball are great. Uh, and they beat a very good Oliver Ames team in straight sets. And um, uh, encouraged by what I saw the first, first match. So I'll give you a couple of bullet points to catch you up real quick here. Senior captain, Junior Gomes, a hat trick. Okay. Hat trick. One on a penalty kick. Uh, a 25-yard snipe from out in front. And just getting his third not too long ago. The other boxer goals scored by Brian Deleuze and Leonardo Texera. Bridgewater Raynham, no shots on net to this point. Really? No shots on net. Kind of reminiscent of our girls last night that, uh, you know, they had opportunities, just couldn't put anything on net. But uh, I've seen this group during the, you know, the summer workouts and the scrimmages that they've had. I mean, they beat a very good Rockland team who I think last year went 15-4-1 and four and one in the South Shore League, which is competitive with Cohasset and Noel. And um, I want to say they, they beat them in a scrimmage 10 0 last week here and um, just how well the group plays together um, and I, once again it's early um, but but they're doing the little things they're in the weight room um, they were in the pool the other day just doing some stretching and uh, some conditioning in there and um, coach Furtado does a nice job with them and, th and this is a second season with the group um, and this is the group of freshmen and juniors that I believe only lost one game in the last two years. So this is a pretty good Very, pool. very big group of returning players as well as the new guys on varsity. So we have just about hit the halfway mark here in the second half. Brockton pressuring all game. And Bridgewater Raynham's defensive zone and BR is on their third goaltender of the night. We saw Jack Gavin get replaced halfway through the first half. Scott Papasadoro, name that rolls off the tongue, <laughs> was replaced about 10 minutes ago. And now we see Derek McCartney, which is no offense to Mr. Papasadoro, a lot easier to pronounce, especially in a pinch. And I just I talked to the coach from BR before the start of the game, and uh, one of the things that he was um, talking about is that he lost 18 seniors from his team last year. He goes, not that's every, tough. Not everybody played, but he had 18. And BR was a very, very good team oh, last year. Yes, they were. They were real good, but to lose 18, and I'm sure even if you have half of those kids. That that's a football number. Yeah. You lose 18 yeah. seniors off the football team. So he really, this is their first game as well. He really wasn't sure how they would do. And, and I'm, I'm sure, just like all the other BR programs, they, uh, they compete. Of course, the athletic director over there, Dan Buron, 
very, very competitive as a human being. Yeah. Not just as I an think, athletic I think, director. I think we all are. You know, I don't like to lose. Not a good loser in anything, it whether it be cards or horseshoes or golf. And here's an opportunity for the boxers. And unable to get a shot off was number 11, Edson Lopes. I've always said, Matt, if you don't play to win, why play? Exactly. Speaking of winning, we've uh, just about made it through the soccer for the week. A couple of big football games coming up, of course, tomorrow night. You might have the night off. No, actually, no? actually, our freshman football team will play Lexington tomorrow here at 5 o'clock. Ah, moving Be it up. Because we have a Saturday game uh, up in Lexington at 2 o'clock. And um, one of the things that I've always said is when the kids do play on the weekend, if we had them play on Sunday or whenever it was, you know, they need their rest. I mean, they, they have homework they need to do, the schoolwork that needs to be done, and it's a long week. So we said that if we can get them here, um, we might as well play when they're in school and give them that time off on the weekend to rest up and heal up and catch up on schoolwork. And that's the most important thing. We need to keep them eligible, especially as freshmen. Will you have access to a TV? Oh, we should be done by the time kickoff comes. I think kickoff's at 8. The beauty of a DVR is I can go home and see the flag being dropped and see them wait in the tunnel because they don't want any part of it. North Kansas City coming to town to face the New England Patriots. Everybody's favorite commissioner is going to be in attendance. Oh, yeah. I'll try to get my hands on one of those uh, Roger Goodell clown nose towels. <laughs> Love to get that framed and put it in, put it in. The, I'm surprised you're not going to be at the game. I'm still thinking about it, but tickets are very, very expensive. But the, even the tickets and the parking aren't the the official deal breaker for me. Mm -hmm. Once, if I'm watching football, I want to crack open a beer. Yep. And if you get into Gillette. You gotta pay twelve fifty for like a Bud Light. Yeah, and then if you have to use the restroom in the game, I mean to, to wait in the line and deal with. I, I just think the biggest hassle for me when I go to Gillette is the parking situation. And, um, fifty first, bucks. And first of all, it, walk it, half it's, a mile. it's expensive, um, and you do you have to walk up and then traffic by the time you get home, and you're talking two two thirty in the morning. If you go to one of the Thursday or Sunday night games with work the next day. Yeah. And I like being in the privacy and comfort of my own home. I'm not going to lie to you. So that's the first football game of the week. And then we've got the season opener. A lot of anticipation for the Brockton High football yeah. team. Three returning quarterbacks. you got three returners up against a very good Lexington team, which we don't know very much about except the fact that their starting quarterback is going to Boston College on a football scholarship. Oh, geez. So we've seen film of him. He's going to play he's, with Aaron. He's, he's very elusive. Um, he's very good with hiding the ball and, and just making things happen. But, you know, I know Coach O'Neill and Coach Colombo and the rest of the rest of the staff is going to have our guys prepared to whatever they get thrown at them. And I'm looking forward to going up there. I mean, I haven't been up to Lexington in a while. It's a great 2 o'clock start. The weather's supposed to be perfect. So if there's anybody out there that's watching and listening and you want to take a road trip up to uh, the beautiful town of Lexington and watch the boxes in action, great way to spend a Saturday afternoon. And there is excellent barbecue up right next door in Arlington. Okay. Where, where am I looking? It's called Blue Ribbon Barbecue. Oh, they also good, have yeah. a location in, in Newton. Uh, West Newton. Yeah. Oh, I love Blue Ribbon very well. Yeah. Excellent. We'll see you there. Yeah. <laughs> Done. And another thing that we're really excited about, and this would not much in the news when it comes to golf team, is that um, they're playing out at the country club Friday against Brookline High School, and that's their home course is up at the country club where they're having the U.S. Open in, in 2020, and uh, the home of the Ryder Cup in past years, and so it, it'll be really a great experience for them to go out and just kind of 
take it all in. <laughs> Give us the location. Get get some people down there. Yeah, um, that's the thing. As far as spectators go, it's a very private um, ah. golf course, and Brookline is fortunate enough to use one of their nine-hole courses for um, their golf team. But as far as spectators go and things like that, it's very um, – we'd like is, to have – Is that the course that just admitted Tom Brady and Giselle? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. It's too exclusive for the greatest quarterback right. of all time. And let me show you, talking of Tom and Giselle, I'm just going to share a quick story with you. I was lucky enough to play in a member guest out there with uh, my neighbor a couple weeks ago. And um, you know, we had caddies, and it was a great experience. And we're in the fourth hole in the course, and the guy goes, hey, just so you know, that's Tom and Giselle's house. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You can see it off in the distance. And as I turn around, I'm like, no. So... I go to the guy and I'm like, hey, don't make a big deal, don't stare. But here comes Giselle. And she's walking down the cart path with her dog. Because they're members and they, they said it's pretty common for her. So um, she comes walking by. And we're maybe 20 feet away. And she stops. You know, we give her a wave. She says, hi, guys. And she waits for everybody to tee off except me. So I'm getting ready to tee up, and she's walking down the cart path, and I can see her walking. I'm like, oh, my God, if I shank one, can you imagine <laughs> Can you imagine the headlines in the Herald? Brockton AD kills Giselle with errant tee shot. So thank God I hit a good one. But I go to the guys that I'm playing with. I'm like, hey, did you see where my ball went? And they all said, do you really think we were looking at your golf ball? <laughs> we're looking at... I think her official title is the world's most prolific supermodel or something like that. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it was just very, I mean, very nonchalant. She was out there with the dog, and they said that they walk out there quite a bit. And it's just a normal person. Yeah. Just, just goes normal, to show. Just a normal person, but oh, I'm telling you, I was, I was petrified that <laughs> it would be that one, the one time that I... Shank for, for, one. Forget about shanking one. I'd be more worried about holding on to the club. Oh, no. It would have been, it was, and trust me, I've shanked, I've shanked a golf shot from time to time, and I'm like, not now. Please, not now, but thank God it didn't. And the crazy thing is, in the Brady Bunchin household, she's the breadwinner. Yeah, she's the one who was, um, she's the member out there. Because it's just a little, little more uh, low key. I don't know how much more low key than that, you know, Giselle Tom. Yeah, you get a supermodel who makes 125 yeah. million dollars a year. No, but I just think it'll be great if, and if the if the team has a chance to go in to the locker room and if they get shown around. I mean, there is so much history there, and they have all the pictures up on the wall. Of course, now that we're talking Patriots, of course they have generously donated the Patriots Foundation a playground to the city of Brockton. I didn't know that. Up on the north side, the old McKinley Park is going to be completely redone. There's some rumors flying around that it's going to be renamed Robert Kraft Playground or something to that effect, but a member of the Crafts is supposedly going to be in attendance. Whether that's Jonathan yeah. or the greatest sports owner in Boston himself, Mr. Robert Kraft. I think that that's fantastic. Of course, we had the revolution down here just a mm -hmm. few weeks ago yep. for a Brockton soccer clinic. Sure. Of course, the talking point at that event was soccer is exploding mm -hmm. on the South Shore. It's yep. grown exponentially a hundredfold in the last 10 years. Whereas we used to compete for football uh, yep. championships every year. Now it's kind of shifted a little bit to yeah, I soccer. Mean, I mean, I just think that, you know, the game has grown just by having the MLS and it gets more television coverage. You have, you know, superstars from, it's a global game. And I just think that it appeals to a lot of kids. Um, but the thing that we run into here is how many quality fields do you have in the city? And this is really the this is the only turf surface we have, um, in a, a lot of the other local communities and uh, schools, and then especially the newer high schools, 
part of that master plan is to make sure that the fields are turf so they can be used year round, uh, they can get used by the community. And I, I would hope that, um, you know, within the next five years or so that we, we take a look at a big master plan and see if they, we can find some funding or some grants or things of that nature to really transform some of the grounds here into surfaces that can be used year round and we won't be held hostage by Mother Nature. So today, of course, the first day of school. What's mm -hmm. it like officially being back in the office? We know we've had tryouts awesome. and practices oh, it's the, best. the last couple of weeks, but now you get to walk through the gym and see yeah. consistent action and activity all oh, day yeah. long. Oh, I, it, the summertime is great because you get a lot of work done because nobody's really bothering you and um, you're just taking care of your, your fall and winter schedules. But there's nothing better than walking through the gym and you see the kids that you had over at South and you get a high Mr. Care and you go to the cafeteria. Um, now, this is the best part of the job is working and seeing the kids every day. I mean, I love when school's in session. One thing I've noticed about you is you walk in the stadium at 3 o'clock in the afternoon to uh, let us in, and you know everybody. It's, hi, Derek. Hi, Bobby. Hey, everybody. You, you have a relationship with 20 trillion different people yep. that are all over the place. Yeah. Oh, that's all, that's the way I've always kind of done things. Oh, we got a goal. And BR finally on the board with eight and a half minutes left to go in the second half. We'll await official word on who got that. Number one, which is Keegan O'Connor, the senior midfielder. And so... The Trojans have us right where they want us. Up five to one with eight minutes left. <laughs> that's a, that, I, I think that's an excellent goal for Brockton to have given up because yeah. it, it teaches them that you just can't put up five goals and then nope. stand on your heels. No, nope, absolutely not. You got. I mean, I know, you know you don't want to run up the score and you want to try to get as many people in the game is, but bottom line is you have to play defense. You can't get lazy. You can't get sloppy. And I think, it, just like you said, that was a good, uh, that's a good teaching moment right there. Head coach Herminio Furtado, one of the better at taking those moments and turning them into learning yeah. opportunities. I mean, I just really am, am impressed with what he does with um, with video. I mean, when I went in the other day, they were breaking down uh, Real Madrid um, game film and just how they set their offense up and how they passed and, um, you know, what things that they should be working on out in practice. So, and he does, um, you know, he's very good at um, pointing out things that kids did well. A lot of times coaches, I mean, myself included, try to tell them what they did wrong and try to correct it, but he builds on positive things as well as, you know, pointing out things they could do better. And I, was, he, he, I think he's just a real, he's a good fit for the soccer program right now. And he is very, very ingrained in the amateur uh, soccer scene in Brockton. Mm -hmm. Of course, we had a huge Cape Verdean uh, based tournament here at Marciano Stadium a few weeks ago. And he was the head coach of the championship team. Yep. So wouldn't that be nice to have every single home game, 5,000 people come out and we yeah. get the music going and people bring drums. And mm -hmm. It might have been the loudest I've ever heard the stadium. Oh, they said it was crazy. And poor, poor Janet Diver was stuck here. And the only reason that she was is I was away. Um, and I was able to break away for a few days and it was that Sunday and it was packed because they said Saturday was had a good crowd but Sunday Sunday was absolutely nuts yeah throw in four of the Trojans headed toward the boxer net still loose out in front Brockton able to clear five minutes to go 
in the second half. The score five to one. Boxers on top of the Trojans. Now the real question on everybody's mind, Mr. Caro, did you survive the 19 innings last night? I woke up, turned on this and like I do every morning before I come to work and I caught the recap with Hanley all smiles walking to second base. So yeah, I survived. <laughs> It just went on and on. They used like 12 different pitchers. Yeah. And it was a bullpen duel. They said, I saw an article on Nesson.com today, the eight craziest stats from last night's 19 inning game. The longest game at Fenway Park since 1981, uh, no, less, 1913, I think, was the longest game at Fenway Park. It was. The longest game the Red Sox have played in since 1981. Okay. And there were only five runs scored. Imagine that. And they need to. 53 they need position to, players they used to catch between fire, the two teams. So, I mean, they. I'm a little nervous coming down the stretch that their starting pitching is. They're getting tired. I mean, it's a long season. Um, you know, I haven't been. Overly impressed with some of the starts that I've seen in the playoffs. If they do get in, it's short. It's very short. Short rest, four games. Yeah. I say this every year. Probably shouldn't say it on the air, but whatever. Come September 1st, they suffer an annual collapse like clockwork. And as much as I hate to say this, they needed to be up 10 games on the Yankees in the middle of August when they had the opportunity. The highest they were, they were up seven and a half, I eight games. I think they were up seven and a half at one point back in early July. And then they started, the Yankees started to catch up. And now, last night was big because it put us back up three and a half. Mm -hmm. It could have gone down to two and a half games. But almost like clockwork every year. They have an annual collapse, and it's led by the pitcher. Yeah. This one sent wide. Two and a half minutes to go. Again, we remind you, official time kept on the field by the referees. Once the clock hits two minutes, the scoreboard stops, and we appear on the Mad Dog Research team. Start a stopwatch. We hit about two minutes and 37 seconds at the end of the first half. Look to little, be a little bit shorter, hopefully get out of here before knock on wood. The weather starts to pick up is McCarthy. Well, the future cast that I made my determination on, Channel 5, uh, they said after 7.30, this, there was a little window in which you'd have a few showers, spot showers, but nothing heavy until after 7.30. And it is now 725. 7.25. So 7.31. I'm hoping. Everyone's going to be back in the cars. I'm hoping that it just holds off until everybody gets home. And uh, it, it stinks driving at night with the rain. And even though Bridgewater is a short drive, I'd rather have them home and safe and let it rain about 11 o'clock tonight. Which I think it is going to. Free kick from the Trojans right on net. Saved by Fabio Andrade. And that's that's the one that, you know, last night in the girls game, that's the shot that Gabby Del Pico could put in 90% of the time from that from that range. And, it, and I know Coach Glennon will get the girls practicing that, especially with, the, with this windy stadium. <laughs> About a minute left here in okay. regulation time. Well, to the crew here at Brockton Cable, thanks a million for uh, having me on again. We'll do it again soon. Absolutely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down on the field because I like to be there for the handshake and uh, thank the refs. So um, you've been listening to not so newly named no, athletic not director. So newly. This is year, year two. Year Come two. On. Mr. Kevin Caro, thank you for joining us. All right, good night, everybody. I want to take this opportunity to thank our cameraman for tonight's festivities. It is the one, the only, the prolific cinematographer, 
Aaron Tebow. Yeoman's work. We didn't stick him out in the rain and the nastiness, but doing a phenomenal job nonetheless. As we have hit two minutes. The whistles blow. Now we're gonna have one last free kick for the Trojans. They're gonna get it off quickly as there is not much time left here at all. The score is five to one, Brockton on top of Bridgewater Raynham. This one sent in, cleared back out. Referee's looking at his watch, getting the whistle ready. This one heads out of bounds, stopped by head coach Remedio Furtado. Last second throw in for the Trojans. Junior Gomes tripped up. Just inside midfield, Brockton bringing it back the other way. Bridgewater finally showing some urgency. 78 minutes into this game. And Brockton's not even going to try to put home the last second goal. And the whistles blow. This game is over. The final score, Brockton 5, Bridgewater Raynham 1. The Brockton Boxers got a season opening win here against their border rivals to the south. A phenomenal win led by the effort and the game ball going to Junior Gomes who scored a hat trick, one on a penalty kick, one on a deflection, and the most impressive, a 25-yard snipe that hit the top right corner of the Bridgewater Raynham net. And that's really what put this game away. The other two boxer goals coming from Brian Deleuze and Leon Leonardo Texera. Keegan O'Connor with the one tally for the Bridgewater Reign of Trojans. And that is the full scoring summary. Again, the final score, Brockton 5, Bridgewater Reign of 1. A season opening win, win for the Brockton boxers. And for everyone here at Brockton Community Access Sports, our cameraman, the prolific cinematographer Aaron Tebow, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.